get a picture of that? Yeah. Yeah. Today, 
That's not the case. We have so many means in which to talk and communicate to one another. We need to take advantage of that. Now, I'm going to give you one for instance. I'm going to tell you something I haven't told anybody. It's a secret, and I'm going to keep it that way as much as possible. This past, this past December, I took some cards and sat down and took some time to mail them out to different folks within the churches. Not so much to be a Christmas card, but just to be a word of encouragement. I got great feedback on that. Folks appreciate that. So I'm going to continue to do that from time to time. So if you get a letter or a note, that's what I'm doing, trying to encourage. That is a form of evangelism, letting people know someone cares about them. So it's just that simple. The last thing I have here is the length of a worship service or the type of a worship service does not make a person holier. <laughs> now, if y'all want me to come back and continue a service in the afternoon, we first have to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Second, I need somebody to feed me, okay? So that's how we're working. But please understand, actually, for a Christian, we should be in some kind of a worship situation every day, even if it's a minute, just to connect with God. All right? Um... Any other announcements? I have two. He has two. Speak loud. Excuse me, Valerie, from my technology friend. Since Lana is not able to be here today, she asked me to share. This coming Saturday is our dinner here. It will be a drive-through dinner using the front uh, front porch area. She is in need of some help in the kitchen. She will be here Friday afternoon, uh, time yet to be determined. Um, when the time is available, I will make sure it's on the Facebook page for those of you that are able to look there, see that reference. And we will be needing help Saturday morning starting at 9 a.m. in the kitchen. If you are able to help at all, please show up. And if you have any questions, please get in contact with Lana. Now, the other one that I have is, yes, I am back. I am feeling better with my wrist. I'm not clear yet, but it's fine this week. I just need to be here. <laughs> yes, I did have the dinner on here. I just had not thank you for taking care of that for me. Um, so I had a couple questions this morning about help. There's your answer to that. I would say you call Alana or contact her in some way, and she can direct you for further information. Okay. Have I missed anything? I guess not. Okay. If you're able, please rise. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. In the world, we are reminded that we are human and fall short in our sin. In Christ's death, we see how selfless he was to die for our salvation. In his resurrection, we receive that eternal forgiveness. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, our Creator, all hearts are open. To you, our desires known. of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. May the God of mercy and might strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our reading comes from the second chapter of Revelation. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer, suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victim's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Jonathan's pulling double duty today. The Church of Smyrna, St. John's second letter to the second church. Now, before we start, we need to remember that this letter was written to a literal church that did exist. Second, I believe it speaks to us 
each and every one of us on a personal level about our faith. Third, I believe it speaks to church congregations, to how well they are serving out their call to further God's kingdom. And fourth, I believe it speaks to a historical church era in time yet to come from when John is writing these letters around 100 AD. I'm going to ask hard questions that will challenge you if you are willing to honestly look inward at your life, your faith journey, and the disposition of this church family toward one another and toward the world. There's the ground rules. And so it begins. The angel of the church of Smyrna writes, these are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. Jesus starts out, as he did last week, addressing the angel who is assigned to keep an eye over that church. He then goes on to make a statement that identifies him in his unique way that only Jesus could embody or possess. He goes on. I know your affliction and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Well, we can see that Jesus is not going to beat around the bush. No real niceties as he enters into this. He simply lowers the boom and states the facts as he sees it. And he says, you are impoverished and just scraping by. Yet, you are rich. Yes, you are being publicly bad-mouthed and lied about. You have a little worldly possessions, wealth, or societal worth. Yet, you are so rich in your faith, your hope, and your love, that it means you are priceless because of the salvation of Jesus Christ. You know it, and by your works you show it. So it would seem that the, lowish, the local Jewish congregation, instead of ignoring this church, tolerating their assembly, or even trying to play nice, they've decided to slander, bully, and oppress their fellow humans, dismissing their own teachings that came from the same God. For Jesus to identify them as a synagogue of Satan, well, that would tell me that they are definitely not following the law of Moses. They are just acting in thought, word, and deed with all evil intention as Satan tempts them. The church in Smyrna is wearing down. It is tough to exist in a place where it seems that all is against you. Even though they seem to be doing all the right stuff, waiting on the blessing, they're still suffering. That must have been a depressing and disheartening place to be, to have to put up with that every day. Then Jesus, the great encourager, says this, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison and he will test you. And you will suffer persecution for 10 days. So there must be some specific event coming up. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I will give you life as, as the victor's crown. Jesus is telling them in our words, hang in there. It is going to get worse before it gets better. I'm telling you this ahead of time so you can prepare physically, mentally, and spiritually. You have the promise of eternal life in the glories of heaven forever and ever. No matter how this washes out, you'll be okay. This is all possible because of your faith. This is an absolute test of your faith and will be a testament of your faith going forward so others can believe. And Jesus concludes with this, wherever his ears, let them hear that the Spirit says to the churches, the one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. 
Here Jesus reaffirms the victory already won and the blessings that await in heaven for all who love him. Your faith, hope, love, belief, they are priceless commodities that can never be taken from you. These are words of great encouragement and reassurance that their struggles are not being missed or going unseen. This message coming from the Lord himself must have really felt great. Now that's what we read. I've explained it to you. Any questions? All right. Now we're going to go in level deeper. Within our personal lives, in our faith journey, in your faith journey, does this situation describe you at any point? Have you ever been in such a tough spot in your life that the world seemingly is closing in on you and there is no getting away? All you have left is your faith in God. But you are starting to slip because you can't see any light at the end of that tunnel. No freedom from burden, no fresh air to breathe. Some good advice or words of encouragement from God sure would come in handy right now. So you pray and God gives you a peace that passes all understanding. The words, do not be afraid, hold fast, help is on the way, keep hold of your faith. Does that resonate with anyone here today? Two important things that we all must remember about God. He is never too early and he is never too late. He is always exactly right on time. And the blessings he sends us may not be what we wanted or expected, but it is always, always exactly what we need when we need it. Think about that in your life. Where were those spots in those times of turmoil that out of nowhere something showed up that helped maybe just a little? God sees our every need. He knows our struggles. He loves us and he will get us through the hard times if we let him. Questions and comments. And how does this resonate within each of you? Or you might have doubts. I wonder why they called it the, uh, the crying church now. You know? yeah. In my own journey right now, this semester in college has been the hardest one of my struggle. Even though there was light at the end of the tunnel because of the pandemic, I struggled. I got an email from a higher up going, hey, we're giving you two days off instead of one. Wishing I could take the extra day and make it a three day, three day break, five day weekend. Wasn't able to, but God gave us an extra day. It was a price. And after Tuesday, it was a <laughs>
I, I know that that was where um, I was trying to be God to deal with this. And there were many times down that road I, I continued to do that, but that gave me so much strength to endure what God was saying. And as you look back now, can you see those moments of stress when God sent you just a little blessing in some way, shape, or form? We can't see it in the moment. When, when we have humans, you know, a lot of times you'll hear me say, you know, you, you aren't going to feel the relief now. But when you look back, you'll see it there. Well, what else? Frank? I think um, when I was an early teenager, 13, 14, I'm not sure how old, but I've mentioned this before that we, we lost our home in the fire. We lost everything. And that was, I, I've never been through anything like that since. I've never had a really difficult time in my life with anything personal or with my family. So I consider myself lucky. But just watching how my mother uh, handled it just really gave me a lot of peace too. She never got excited. She never, she never cried that I knew of. <coughs> She said, well, her, her remark was, well, I guess we'll have to start over. And we didn't have nearly the insurance that we should have had or anything like this. But I think of my mother's faith, much more than my sister and I and my dad. We were, we were kind of a mess. But my mother held it all together, you know, and, and uh, our neighbors were really good to us. That was another thing. Different neighbors took my sister and I in, so my mother and dad could find a place to live. So, you know, it's just hard to explain. We have to. We can't really explain where that calmness comes from, other than it gets that peace. Yeah. But we can't understand fully. It just is there. I remember when I started my job that I have now. Um, one of the on day one. And, and these folks were not Christians by any means. But on day one, my boss came to me and he said, as a new employee, I need you to know something. No matter what. You make a mistake, there's a problem. Do not panic. Do not panic. Because when you panic, you do rash things and you can't think straight. Don't panic. And I hear God saying that here in these words today. Hold fast. Who's your baby? Don't panic. John, I have yeah. um, when I was facing major back surgery, um, you know, there was a lot of, to be a lot of anxiety initially, but the day I went to the hospital and they were prepping me for surgery, I was so calm. I just felt the calmness. I, I couldn't believe. And, and Jody and, and Wayne can attest by that. I said, no, oh, I'm fine. I said, God's with me, I'm going to be fine. And I went into that operating room with no anxiety and no stress. And I certainly didn't do that on my own. Right. <laughs> so that just an overwhelming peace. And I know where that came from. That's right. All right, let's go another level. What about the life of this church? Does this describe us as a congregation? And if it doesn't, keep this in mind when we go through these churches. If something doesn't fit us, speak up and say why not. Did it ever fit either of the churches when they were apart? Well, I can tell you that there is a good chance that this could have been the story of this church during COVID's worst. Many don't realize how tight things got. The prayers that God would come and help us. The pleas, of course, and folks responded. But there are a lot of churches out there that because of COVID, 
they closed. Too many to count. I believe that we are a very blessed church family right now. Look around. We have enough. We probably have well more. Can you name any of those blessings? It's your church. We do. We have access. We have each other. We have each other. <laughs> we, have the money, we have the money to do a ministry to those who can't come yet for whatever reason. We're reaching them. And we are happy to do that, those in TV land. Do you know how many churches don't have an organ and a piano? They'd like one. How many people don't have me? Oh, to be young again. <laughs> there are churches in this area, not necessarily within the Lutheran denomination, that can only afford to have church once a month. There is one particular church that when they have that service once a month, the guy who cleans the place is the guy who delivers the message. He doesn't get paid for any of it. He's doing it out of the goodness of his heart. Do you see how blessed we are? But think about something. Would we have had the faith as a church that things would have gone completely <coughs> different and totally wrong during this time of COVID that we would have been in this place? Would our faith have carried us through? I think it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what you would do Uncertain when you're uncertain, you know, you don't know really how you're going to be or act because you don't know what's out there, what's going to happen to you until it happens. So, counsel and the pastor, we both saw you had the entry. And I'm very grateful to all of you. We, had, we, we as a group had to make hard decisions. And I think that we made the right decisions. And I think that we will be blessed far beyond what we can imagine coming up. I do. I also think that your relationship with your uh, fellow members is a big thing. I mean, I spend time with Chip and I spend time with Greg. And, you know, it's just, it's nice to know that there's other people out there that have the same mm -hmm. uh, thoughts. And think about something with the COVID, how it divided us. That we couldn't have fellowship, but yet our fellowship with one another is returning. It's going back to what it was, albeit slow. And we all have masks on. I can't tell somebody who some people are sometimes, but we're coming back. We got to keep that faith. One last thought on this. I recently read an article that here in America, we are now under 50% Christian. Under 50% Christian as a nation. That's the lowest we've ever been. The religion that is growing in this country probably isn't what you think. It's unbelief. Those folks have given up hope. Do you think the churches that closed during this time still have faith? Because I'm sure they prayed and prayed. And You're prayed. right. Yeah. I think they did. Um, but you know, all things happen to the greater good of God. So out of that, 
something better will come. Um, it's just sad. It's just sad to see it come to that. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we had 137 churches in the, in the Upper Susquehanna Center. What did you tell me, 114? Between 114 and 121. Yeah, think about that over the course of 10 years, how many Lutheran churches closed. Now you can say they didn't lose hope. They didn't lose faith. They did pray. But for some reason, they could not continue on. And that's where this church is at. They're on the edge. It's not their fault they haven't done what they were supposed to do. But they're taking a beating. There is no doubt that we are under demonic attack as a nation. Sure. And uh, it, as always, it always starts with just the, the smallest little chip being taken out. I remember when I was in elementary school, we used to pray. And then Madeline Murray O'Hare succeeded in stopping that. Mm -hmm. And that was the first strike. Anything else? Lastly, we come to the church era in time and history. Where on the timeline does this best speak to the church universal? You mentioned the Church of Tears. Okay. I believe this letter speaks to the persecuted church. It would be a span of about 200 years from 100 AD, about the time that St. John wrote this, died to about 300 AD. Christians were blamed for everything. It didn't matter what social ills or weather anomalies occurred. They were hunted down, imprisoned, and ultimately killed. This is the time period in history when the Romans were having their gladiatorial events. And when they got bored of that, well, they beat a few Christians to the lions. Just for fun of it. It wasn't until about 313 AD when Constantine the Great, the Emperor of Rome, put a stop to this behavior and actually made Christianity a state religion because he saw a sign from God in the heavens. That is in history. It is recorded in secular history. This is not something coming from a myth in the Bible or anything that can be attributed that way, this is part of our history. Many Christians lost everything they had in their lives, yet they kept their faith and they endured. They didn't have a physical church building gathered. They were hiding wherever they could to gather in fellowship. Imagine that. This is the kind of resolve the church needs today. That no matter what, you're gonna keep your faith and you're gonna stay together. Now before we finish, there's one more thing here. And it's very subtle and you may have even missed it. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. I think we need to talk about we as Christians need to know exactly what this means. Anybody want to take a shot at it? Second death is your separation from God. Right? And where do you end up? Not where you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's talking nice. <laughs> well, we, we have a rule of thumb when it comes to Scripture. We always let Scripture define Scripture. And we don't have to look far. In the book of Revelation, John gives us the answer. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power. So he's kind of restating what we heard before. He goes on. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Anybody ever hear of the lake fire before? Yeah, some of us. And then the last one I picked here is 
they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Okay, now that I've shared all this and we all have a warm fuzzy about this, but about hearing this, I don't think we have any speculation to what it really means. The Bible is pretty clear. Now to place this in time even a little bit more, this happens after the great white throne judgment occurs. Okay? Now, in all of this scary stuff, we need encouragement. Well, here it comes. For those of us who are true Christians, that is those who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, take a big deep breath and put a smile on your face behind those masks, you're good. Praise God. We are spared from this because our names are written in the book of life. Any questions? all good with this now one somebody should have asked the obvious question what is the book of life anybody wonder that one nobody wonders anything anymore <laughs> okay um in a couple weeks when we get to the church of sardis i'm going to explain that concept further because we as christians need to understand that as well so it's coming up, something to look forward to. Four short verses, four different audiences. It speaks directly to the church that existed 2,000 years ago. It speaks directly to each and every one of us personally and our relationship with God. It speaks directly to this church family and its condition and service to God. It speaks to the churches in time and echoes through the churches worldwide. Looking back, now that you've heard all this, how are we doing compared to this church? I'd say pretty dull one good, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Does this, has this struck a chord in any of you? Did it speak to you personally, any point in your life? It did to mine. Pretty sure at some point in time it spoke to yours. This is that looking inward and being honest part. Does this speak to us as a congregation? Maybe, maybe not. Let's hope we receive the blessing that we never have to be this church. In the condition that they're in, but we want their faith. Right? We want their faith. Any parting comment? The faith of Smyrna is the kind of faith we all need in our lives, in our church, and in the world today. He who has ears, let us hear, for we have been warned. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. <laughs>
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he becomes the judge of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of God. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God. You call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creating God. The earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love. <coughs> me. So that by their song, all creatures of land, sea, and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join them in praise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful server, to serve. Faithful to save you. You conquer the world, not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering. Provide for those needing homes or medical care. And point us towards life-changing responses to those needs in our own communities. Be with the dying and those who mourn. We lift up to you today the needs and concerns of Helen Nyhart, Marianne Markowitz, Andy Beaver, Leroy Beer, Darv Kraus, Wanda Groom, Wayne Mingle, Jane Watson, Ronnie Johnston, Ashley Frank, John Lewis, Barb Gomber, 